All right, we wanna welcome all of you and hopefully all of you by now know that this evening we're gonna have the first ever virtual conference sessions. And so please keep that in prayer that the technology works and that people show up and uh, we get uh, a good response to that. We've uh, practiced a couple times and helped a lot of people to get online. So we're looking forward to this evening where we can just gather together to do that. So um, before Nick speaks, I, I'll just ask that we bow for a word of prayer. Father, we come to you at this noontime hour thanking you and praising you for another day. Yet we also know that there are a lot of people right now that are having great anxiety and stresses about things that are going on. We've had churches that have reported that there have been members that have gotten COVID and at one is that I know of personally is in the hospital. So Father, I pray for those that, that struggle. I pray for those that have this illness, Father, that you would protect them, that you would help them to come through um, and uh, not succumb, but also, Father, that you would be seen in it. That's what we're gonna ask for boldly, that your glory would be seen through it. So Father, we, we come to you right now at this noontime hour, thanking you and praising you for another hour of connection. I thank you for Nick who leads us and, and is uh, connecting us to one another in relationship. It's been sweet. So I thought, Father, I pray that you would bless him for his time with us. I pray that you would give him the wisdom to lead. And I pray that you would be seen in and through that as well. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Nick. Thank you, Colleen. So we have two big meetings coming up today. One is the uh, vote tonight. Um, and as Colleen mentioned, our big concern there is just simply the technology as we, as we step into sort of a new area um, and we take this vote tonight. Um, you know, we, we're, we're, we've tested it. Uh, everything seems to be just fine. So, but when you load it up with uh, 300 people or 200 and some people, um, we're just, we're just going to pray that God's hand and uh, God's almighty power over the internet and all of over technology works well tonight uh, that we're not, you know, we're not jammed up and we can get the votes taken. Uh, but tonight is simply a voting session. So, uh, it is, you know, a necessity. It's in the bylaws. We have to get that done. But in reality, I think what we're going to start working towards immediately then is towards some sort of a fall fellowship where we can come together and really start to hammer out some other items, um, specifically maybe some items with regards to the strategic plan and so forth and where we're going as a, as a region of the denomination. Um, the denomination is having those conversations as well in the general conference, but uh, we want to make sure that the ERC is also, you know, staying focused and moving forward. The second meeting that um, probably, certainly, I don't know, it might even be, well, I won't go into comparisons. Another important meeting is, is this afternoon, the chairs of the commissions will be coming together. Um, and that meeting is very important because that meeting is going to be focused probably more on uh, the strategic nature of where we are as the region going forward and how the, the commissions can continue or continue to work together, but even maybe work together um, more formally as we strive to, um, to accomplish getting better each and every day, right? So if we talk about our role as witnesses of Christ, and if we talk about um, the many ways that, that we're struggling to reach into the next generations, uh, our strategic plan is specifically focused on reaching the next generation for Christ. And um, whether that next generation is people in their 60s or whether the next generation is 50s, 40s, 30s, 20s, 10s, whatever, um, our goal is to get better at doing that every single day. And so when the commission, when the commissions meet this afternoon, we're going to be talking about that. Uh, for today, what I'd like to do is start by listening. Um, I'd like to see if anybody has anything on their heart with regard to how we're doing in terms of uh, witnessing to Jesus Christ and reaching the next generation. Uh, and that's a little bit of a switch from where we've been. We've been focused on a lot of things that have to do with what's going on out in, in the communities right now, topical issues from the news or whatever it might be. But I'd like to take a moment as we step into this chairs meeting and just ask that question. You know, where do you guys see, you men and women, see uh, where, where are we, you know, where are we reaching the next generation? Do you have concerns? Is the Spirit talking to you at all about things that we really need to address? Um, I'd kind of like to have some input if anybody is willing to, to share their heart. 
because you all have been listening to me on a regular basis tell you what I think. So I'd like to hear what you think for sure today before we go into this meeting. And I want to share with you something that, you know, this morning when I woke up, I spent probably two, three hours just focused for prayer in this meeting because it is important that whatever comes out of it is collective wisdom. So how are we doing on meeting the needs of the next generation? If you're looking for just, I, I don't know, if you're looking for just examples of what we see in our communities or what we see in our churches or what we see in our denomination, or are you looking for ideas, period? Uh, and as far as what community things I see positive here in the Big Spring, I'm just going to speak to the Big Spring area here. Um, we've got uh, a couple of churches that came together and are doing a fun and faith in the park activity, kind of a VBS on Fridays, uh, started here last Friday. Uh, of last week. It's going to run till about the middle of August, a two-hour section that it's going to be involving at least that I'm aware of three different churches across denominational lines, bringing the VBS program, you know, the craft, the snack, the, uh, the uh, creation story and how the New Testament speaks to the creation story, um, just giving that uh, input into uh, the, uh, the youth in our community, the children in our community. Uh, it's taken VBS out of the church into the community park area. First two they're going to have at the Legion Pavilion because the park's being in use for some renovation, but eventually they'll be back uh, back at the park. So I, I see that uh, cross-denominational lines getting away from the silo thing. Um, we are reaching out as a, as a Big Spring Interchurch Council with a time of concentrated community prayer on Sunday, and I seek some some prayer cover for that. Uh, that's across generational lines, naturally, but it's also showing, and I think that's what we need to be about. We're showing our young people that it's it's not just a Sunday morning faith. We're now moving into the community and saying, this is what we're doing. We're, we're holding and, and being involved in the prayer vigils. We're, we're taking uh, lessons and devotional times and, and just showing you that we have a big family. It, it's not about this little denomination here, this big denomination here. It's about those who love Jesus, and that's what we're doing. So I see some encouraging things happening in the Big Spring, you know, school district area. I, and I think the catalyst for that, quite honestly, had been the formation of that Big Spring Interchurch Council years and years and years ago. Um, I mean, it, it, it's been around at least for a quarter of a century, I think. You've got a good 20 years anyway. Because I know when I got involved with it, it was back at Plainfield, so that would have been at least uh, at least 15 years ago. Um, but I think it has about 20, 25 years worth of legs to it, and it put a foundation down that we can build on that. And I think as as pastors in the churches of God, as we look at our communities, if you if you have an area that you're ministering in that is got community, because I know there's some of our pastors that the nearest church is 12 miles away. And, and then the nearest one to that is another 12 miles down the road. But for churches that have that community sense, um, if there's not a, a, a community gathering, start one. Start one. Um, because we need to be about unity and mission. And it's the unity and mission that's Christ. Um, we, we have different family names, but we're one family under God, driven by what Christ tells us to do, how he shows us how to do it, and how he even gives us the one that will equip us <laughs> and how to do it. So that's just a couple of things that, that I see going on community-wise. Um, you know, and, and we're part of that community, encouraging our, our church to partner with other churches and, and seeing that community working together. Uh, we do a, a Halloween Fall Fest Day, the same thing. A couple of churches come together into the community at the Newville uh, Park area. So those are some of the things that are encouraging to me. Because what it does, is it takes faith out of the, the four walls of the church and puts it active. Because I think that's what a, a lot of our millennials lost as they were coming into adulthood. They, they failed to see a connection with their parents' faith and being involved in ministry somewhere other than just to the immediate circle of their faith community. So I'll go to... No, that's good. The other churches that are involved... Um... Like, are there any hurdles that you guys have to other overcome and working together, or is it just pretty easy to work with the other churches? 
we decided uh, from the get-go, and it's something we continued on the years that I've been involved with it, that we're going to agree on the non-negotiables. And negotiables, uh, if we want to talk about them sometime, fine, but that's not going to be our, our driver. Uh, we all come to an agreement on Christ, Christ alone, faith, faith alone. Mm. And uh, the works part comes from living out your faith. And that's what we do. Uh, and it's, we got independence. We have Church of God, Tennessee. We have uh, Lutheran churches, naturally Church of God, Assemblies of God. We haven't picked off any Methodists, so I don't know <laughs> what's going on. But anyway, those are the, the major major churches that we, we have, denominationally, I should say, uh, right. churches that we have. Thank and you. that has not been, uh, and that's a very positive, that has not been an issue. Uh, at all and where it seems to start to you know we agree not boom boom and it's 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 that sense of unity and this is we're called to be on mission and we're not going to let you know well we think it's actually the body you know we're not going to let those kind of things distract us from god's work amen brother that's good i was looking to see if tracy was on the call because i know mechanicsburg has a pretty active uh, uh ministerium as well um, but he's not with us today, I don't think. Um, so others out there, is that, you know, are there others that have interministerium stories to tell that, you know, where that's working well in your community? And if not, that's fine. Any other? Uh, I can speak to that for like up at Altoona. You know, Matt Hornberger's been talking a lot about having interfaith they get to get every Sunday morning at six thirty and pray, and they get about thirty churches going. So, considering to where they were in the sixties to where they're at now, that's that's a big jump for Altoona for churches to get together and work together. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And I never did watch that. Um, I should have the Easter thing that they did together as an inter interdenominational yeah. council. I never did watch it. I just realized now that I didn't. But yeah. um, they're doing some pretty cool stuff too. Well, that's great. Pat, did you have something to add? We have a ministerium here in Mount Carmel, which is really cool. And actually, we're getting back together Thursday, finally, because we've been shut down with the COVID-19. And it's all the churches. And I just typed it. Uh, we run it. We, were, we canceled VBSs pretty much in the area for the summer. So now we're going to get together as a ministerium and try to put together a community family day. All the churches will be running at the same time. Different churches will be running. You know what I'm saying? Involving the communities, involving the families to show that we're unified here still. We're praying something will come out of this. I know they had done this years ago, Ashton Dallas on me, she's on here somewhere. And it worked years ago, so this is what we're planning on doing again in September. So, Good deal. Thank you, Pat. So, so here's a good question for you. Um, the ERC strategic plan, how many of you are familiar with the ERC strategic plan? Raise of hands. Okay, so that's actually, well, I guess I, I was looking at the hands and not looking at the faces. So everybody that's on staff should be familiar with the strategic plan. That was a given. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow, that's like more than half the people that are on the call. Okay. Um, because that's another thing that I need to be aware of. I know a lot of people had input during that planning process, the town hall meetings and so forth, but you know, how much of it is in a, in a working way out to the churches so that they understand where we're going as a, as a region. Um, and, and again, if I look at that, maybe the old, let me see a show of hands again. For those of you that are aware of it and know what's in it. Okay. So yeah, mostly everybody on the call is, or on the Zoom is, is aware of it. Now, again, we're down to 22 people. So um, we need to, uh, we need to expand that group. Um, and we need to make sure that that strategic plan is well known. Because again, as we get together with the chairman this afternoon, that is going to be the driver of where we're going as these commissions start to work together. One of the things that I brought up, um, and we're going to play this out a little bit today, is the idea that um, I, th I think it's commonly held, but it may not be, that most of 
most of the groups sort of in, in, in positions of power within ERC tend to be more of the, the shepherd gifting and the teacher gifting. And so the, um, the strategic plan obviously represents that, but so does the composure of the commissions. They, they tend to be shepherd teacher focused. Um, we're going to be talking about that today. I asked each of the, the chairs to take a look at their commissions and, you know, just take a look around and see what kind of gifting is on your commission. Do you have a well-balanced voice that scripture would call us to? Uh, so we'll be talking a little bit about that today. Um, you know, obviously there's still uh, a number of places where the, the, um, the commissions don't interact probably as much as they should. Uh, and I think that's been past practice. So, uh, you know, looking around, that's what we're going to be looking to bring more voices in and, uh, you know, probably on Thursday's call, I'll be giving you an, an, a, uh, uh, an update on how that meeting went. Um, because now that we're, now that we're coming out of, I just got the door shut on me. Now that the now that we're coming out of, uh, you know, this this uh, critical mode, I guess, of COVID. I mean, we may stir back into it, but I think it's now uh, we're all kind of used to what that means. Um, we're going to be looking more at as we regather from a, an administrative standpoint. Where are we going with the region? Um, what's going to happen with things like? Um, credentialing standards and what's going to happen with things like, you know, um, ad council's involvement and ramping that up in terms of what do we have to talk about? Does the constitution reflect where we need to be? All these types of things we're going to be talking about. So um, any, Colleen, do you got anything? I see chat has four things, but is there anything in there? Um, one of the things, Pat had to pop off for a minute. He's supposed to have uh, Travis Helm come to him in the next couple of days and Travis is having some health issues. So just, uh, he asked that we pray for him. That was about it. Okay. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a quiet day and I, I came to listen today. So I don't really have a whole lot to give you um, again, other than preparing your people for the vote tonight. Um, keep that entire process in your prayers as we move forward. Um, you know, again, hopefully the technology won't let us down, but I'm sure there's going to be some people that get on there when, when we loaded up with two, some 200 people or whatever it might be, there may be people that just, they didn't come to the test nights and, and they just don't know what's going on. Um, uh, Colleen, you fill in anything that I'm going to miss here, but the bottom line is just some, some things for you to remember. If you are gathering at your church and you have say three, you know, two delegates and a pastor or whatever it might be, if you're going to be casting three votes from your, from one location, it is absolutely essential so that we get the numbers right for constitutional reasons that you identify in the chat that your multiple votes are and who those people are from that location so that when we do the vote counts, um, things make sense because uh, I'm sure there's going to be more people voting than are actually on the call. Um, so again, just let us know that. the there, there may be a few moments of confusion, but just give us some time to catch up when you know, if for any reason there's a motion from the floor to nominate somebody else, uh, that's all good. We're going to be prepared for that, but it may take us a moment or two to catch up as, as that comes in. We're not expecting any nominations, but if they come, we're prepared for them. Um, and then the other thing, uh, shoot, what else was the other thing I wanted to say? Uh, the way their nominations are closed would have to be through the chat as well. Right. Remember, because of the way the thing's set up, all floor discussion – um, any nominations or, or any motions that might come up. So, you know, again, we, we, there, there'll be mo motions to close the nominations, for instance. All that is going to take place via the chat section. So people have to remember that. But remember, the votes are going to be taken by um, a poll that Colleen's going to send out. Now, Colleen, remind me, how that, that works in okay. a multiple location environment. What's going to happen is in the chat, you're going to get a link and you'll click on it and it takes you to a Google form. It takes you actually out to your browser. Like when you're coming on Zoom right now, like you're not on your internet browser right now, you're on your application, your Zoom application. And so whenever you click on this link, it's a safe link that I will put in the chat. You'll click on it and that'll be one of the ballots and you are going to vote and submit, there's a button to submit, and then you're done. And then you just X out of that and wait for the next ballot to pop up in your chat. So it's, uh, it's pretty simple. 
and we'll get a tally right away. I'll know, you know, who's won or if we have to revote or whatever. So that's how it'll work. So are there any questions from a technical standpoint that anybody has? <clears throat> Y'all are good to go? Good. Yeah, Matt. There are a couple of churches up here that are not very well connected and they have pastors that aren't very well connected. And I was going to call them today because I know Altoona First Church of God, um, Jill is usually a delegate. I don't know that she's been connected to the, or has an opportunity to, or um, from Lakemont Dutch, I forget his last name, but there's some people and I was going to reach out today because I'm having everybody come here because there was so much confusion. I said, everybody come here and I'll, I'll be there just to proctor the whole thing. But if I open it up to, to those other people, will it make a mess if there's a delegate from Altoona first here at fourth street? And, Cause the, the way the ballot seems to go on the, on the, on the thing you're going to send out Kelly, it should work fine. Right? Yeah. It has an opportunity to enter another, another vote on that ballot. So you can enter multiple votes, right. um, but what, just identify what, the church. What we need you to do, though, is when everybody comes on, you need to identify all the other people who are going to be voting from your device. Okay. So you'll put in the chat um, the names of the people that are going to be voting beside you. Okay. And if they're from another church, put in that they're from another church, too. Right. Yeah, right. That, yeah, that would be helpful. I don't, I don't know how it's going to be received, but I'm going to reach out and see what happens. Yeah, yeah no, we appreciate you doing that. I mean, because I think... You know, we've been uh, asking and asking for people to submit sure. you know, delegates and, and emails and all of that. And I don't know that everybody did that. So thank you for doing that, Matt. We appreciate well, that. One church said I have a pastor. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions anybody has? I don't see any other hands up. And we're all on one screen today. Hmm. All right. So with that, there's no reason to hold you. Um, we'll stay in touch. Please be in prayer for the this evening. Um, we have the ballots all full, so you'll get those. Uh, and again, if there's anything, any questions or concerns you have, please call into the office and, and uh, we'll try to accommodate any questions. Um, yeah, bear with us tonight. It, it'll be a new experience. Hopefully it'll go well. So, and, and uh, yeah, anyway. So I guess I will pray us out today. Um, I want to thank you all for coming on the call. I want to keep, like I said, I want to keep these calls going. So this is going to be a forum and a time where, where people are going to know that if they have some input to give, uh, we're here to listen. Lord God, we just thank you for this day. Um, we thank you for the opportunity to come together in a free country, uh, proclaiming our faith. Uh, Lord, help us to do that better and better every day. Lord, help us to un constantly stay in touch with your will, um, to stay in touch with your gospel. Lord, to truly understand the depth and richness of that gospel, Lord, and, and, and that we can continue to go out into the community and preach it in a great way. Lord, we know that there are people within the, the Church of God family that are now ill. Um, you know, they're, you know, they're in the hospital with COVID-19. Um, churches have now been touched within their circles. We just ask for your healing hand on those that may come in contact with the virus. Lord, your hedge of protection around those people, Lord. Um, and also, Lord, I just ask that your wisdom continue to flow through the Holy Spirit to every church that continues to struggle with the idea of what does it look like to do church now in this environment. Lord, we just pray that you watch over um, Yes, this land, but also other lands as we start to see spikes uh, come back up, maybe and as people start to gather again, Lord. Um, just more than anything, Lord, we just ask for your wisdom, your wisdom. Let us be focused on God's wisdom, God's word, uh, the things that teach us how to live, Lord. We appreciate those things. Lord, we ask a special blessing also on um, the many missionaries that we know. Uh, some of the missionaries that we know have COVID-19. Um, Lord, we know that this, this pandemic has hurt a lot of countries in terms of food distribution and, um, you know, the gospel teaching kids, the gospel healing people, the gospel being spread in these countries. Lord, we just ask again, um, you know, that, that 
where, where your fire is just moving, Lord, that it will continue to move no matter what happens during this pandemic. Um, Lord, we are here to just bring glory to your kingdom, to let people know that there is an alternative, that there is a choice to the human flesh. Uh, Lord, and just help us every day to grow more and more in your spirit, maturing in your spirit so that we can continue to be um, the servants that you would have us to be. Lord, and at the end of this all, man, we just thank you so much for sending your son that what was broken can be corrected, Lord. And we just thank you for him, and it's in his name that we pray these things. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for coming on board. We'll see you on Thursday. Well, we'll see you tonight, and then we'll see you again on Thursday, and I'll have a report for what happened during the chair's conference or commission meeting. So take care. Bye-bye.